Right, uh, so welcome from my Professor side. Lien, welcome uh, on stage. Welcome from my side too. So my name is Catherine Klinge. Uh, I do the uh, clinic or EMG clinic as you want uh, to go with Janet and Eva. And um, very warm well welcome from my side. So i uh, just go straight ahead to the case because um, we have one live patient who kindly agreed to come here today. Um, and the, our topic is the spasmodic dysphonia, and she was uh, very nice and agreed to come here. And the interesting thing in this case is um, that it's a sort of a shared patient, too, because she presented to our clinic in Gera, she presented to the clinic in Jena, and uh, she presented, too, to the clinic in Belitz. Where is gone? Oh, there. <laughs> so we all know this patient. Um, it's a 50-year-old 50 woman. And the uh, first uh, presentation for a person in 2017 had increased voice problems, done some weakness, uh, increased strain, and that all came worse and worse. And 2020, since that uh, year, um, it is like it is at the end. So she described first, uh, she had moments after waking up, and then it just got worse. Um, no following problems and no improvement at all. Um, she used to work as an office, office care, but she's uh, temporarily retired at the moment. And um, she had had done botulinum toxin injections. The first time in August 2020, where she had some sort of relief, all the other injections, uh, almost no relief at all. Um, she had repeated MRI scans. She's had a, a good neurological workup. Uh, thanks for the visits. Uh, it's always very uh, good to be together with you and uh, no relevant findings with that. She tried several other therapies as these patients do with speech therapy, no improvement at all. Some relief with therapy and no effect with cannabis or nitrogen. And this is her voice when she presented last time uh, in September this year. <laughs> The typical tremor. Only with laughing and sneezing, she's uh, relieved from the tremor, but when she say ye, then typical tremor, as you can see here. We performed an EMG. She used to uh, perform EMG under local anesthetic, as I sort of just said to you, too. Nice a lignogen, tubes in, put into skin and into the trachea. <coughs> the respiration that you carry into the trachea. <coughs> Dislocated that why the sound is like a... We decided to show you the entire length of that so you actually got a feel for an ENG. So it's very worker. 
workout um, experience. You see this dense signal, and now the left side, as we attempted to do the TA on the left side here. So it's a very honest uh, video, so we haven't cut out anything. Um, we actually get the little CT muscle. The tremor and the tonic activity. And we, we notice now that um, that was what that is eating them at the end. activity. My patient correction of people. I've been always in the So, this is found in the other city. With the EMG signal again, with this tremor like this, the microphone, and less dense signal on the TA muscle on the left than compared to the right. So now the PCA, you're aiming for the cricket. Thyroid membrane going straight in, then you will hear the air signal. Now, now contact with the mucosa. And as you can see here, Garrett is doing the drilling maneuver. So you have cartilage contact. See the needle bends a little bit, trying to protect the needle and do still this drilling maneuver until you feel the resistance becomes less. Then you will hear the muscle sound. Come closer. So you see here on the this is the microphone you see the tremor on the microphone but you can see here there's the pca more tremor like activity than on the ta so again air sound and contact with the mucosa, drilling maneuver, protecting the needle because it starts bending. And then be careful that the needle might slip in slightly. Also signal. Quite similar to the right side bit, but all the left side. So, let's mal. I. Tremor again. Und nochmal. Und 
Los Leute. Und Schlüssel. Genau, und, und ähm, Schuck. Ganz oben. Gut. Als letztes machen wir noch den CT rechts. See here again, so you see this tremor-like activity, but less dense than on the other side. So the CT right at the end. Palpation from outside the larynx. The aim of the two is the side that you want to hit. Go with the cartilage contact. You want to hit the border with the thyroid Sie mal probieren, so von unten so. same here in an entirely a bit more dense signal than on the left side so in total we can actually say comparing is a bit late voice onset and to compare the activity the right side of the larynx is a bit more activated than the left we can say and the pca involvement is quite obvious so you have a lot of tremor tremor and on the right and the left pca but more on a more dense signal on the right side. So we concluded what we can do with the patient because all of these botulinum toxin injections she hadn't had very good in her memory. So we made the suggestion, we try and do it again, but we will involve the PCA muscle and go in for the right side because the signal was more dense here. So this delayed onset between uh, starting of activity in the EMG and the voice it's a typical thing, so they completely pairs up before they start voicing, yeah, which is a normal person to do that. It's just they need a lot of strain to actually start talking. This is when you when you listen to them, they they are very tense before they actually start and producing any voice at all. So we put um Botox um on the right here, so. We'll film that for you too. 2.5 units. We use, use the same setting, the EMG, so EMG. Same dose on the left side. To interrupt these tonic contractions. So this is actually wrong is the is the PCA on the right side we went for. The go to is fragothyroid membrane very straight first to have the air signal. <clears throat> Aiming more towards the right side. And we put five pins. So the needle blocks with the cartilage 
then you just apply more pressure slowly. It will trickle past the, the carbon first in most. So, may I ask, what was your working diagnosis? But a spasmodic schizophrenia, but you did both TAs and the PCA as well. Yes. Yeah. Which she is for her. Yeah. Exactly. Because just detecting the TAs hadn't worked. Okay. So we figured out why it didn't work. Mm -hmm. So we did a complete mm -hmm. mapping and found there is also activity which might disturb mm -hmm. in the PCA. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We didn't go for entirely high dose of Botox, but she had Botox before, and obviously she was quite anxious too if she should have done it anyway at all again. And uh, was a trial. We discussed that with her uh, because she had several injections before and she didn't notice any change at all. So we figured, okay, we try an EMG and see if we find any more other muscles they should be involved. And we went for the PCA. This patient has some tremor as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's your experience with uh, injection borders? Because I know so many people inject borders for the patients with tremor as well, which means I don't know whether anyone does that here. Yeah, we try. Yeah, we try. do it in the but not the I know it's Well, for her, it actually made a difference. So we saw her after, this is about four weeks after injection. Nordwind und die Sonne, eins dritten sich Nordwind und Sonne, wer von ihnen beiden wohl oh, der Stärkere wäre, wär 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 als ein Wanderer, der in einem warmen Mantel gehüllt war, des Weges kam. Es wurde einig, dass derjenige für den Stärkeren gelten sollte, der den Wanderer zwingen würde, seinen Mantel abzunehmen. The interesting part is here when you see um, as we, we knew we couldn't put her into the when you watch the right side, she sees she has um, partial paresis that, uh, that she's having at the moment, but she hasn't been affected with that. And now Luft holen, einatmen, ausatmen. Immer mal tief einatmen. And I'd like to introduce the patient, and uh, she's happy to answer any questions. Thank you. She noticed that the effect um, has, uh, has got less, um, so I appreciate to Ah, that's this. And that's the Botox thing it's going to house the bar and the schmerzen. It's as a sad oil. But the schmerzen are in one, two days angehalten. And then on the Tag had I by Dotter and the air, that it's better ging. And at the third Tag was then so that it's a warm, that it's an outer reading point or that's a red rim. So she said she had some pain um, after the injection, uh, which is uh, quite normal. We tell the patients that you know, well, two days. Few days, yeah, two days into so starting day four is got better with the words which were coming out more fluently, and she could actually make oh. sentences which was not uh, possible um, before. Her. And so she felt quite well, and she, we saw her the week afterwards. And uh, that's done in the end of the
So um, she's saying the few started to get worse a week ago. Um, she noticed that loudness is going down, so the voice is more soft. So it's it's more work to get the words out, but it's not as bad as it was. Um, What's the worst at the moment for her? So any any form of communication is the problem for me. She's not working at the moment, but any private communication is difficult. And we had a lot of hope, obviously, that uh, the injections would last a lot longer or forever. I mean, I, I told her last time she came that we expected to get worse again, but um, as we all know, we all hope, um, and um, it's difficult for her not to hope. So, um, so reality. Können Sie das vergleichen mit anderen Erkrankungen, die Sie gehabt haben? Also welchen Schweregrad der Erkrankungen würden Sie das so vergleichen? Ja gut, es gibt Erkrankungen, wo man Schmerzen hat. Sie habe ich einen ständigen Schmerz, also nicht sehr toll, aber der Schmerz ist ständig da. Und die Erkrankung ist für mich auf einer Stufe von 1 bis 10, eigentlich die 10. Wenn, ist, ja. Ich kann nicht arbeiten, also ich bin ja. eigentlich im Außen tätig, das kann ich gar nicht. Ja. Ich kann nicht telefonieren, ich kann nicht privat mich mit Freunden, meinem Partner unterhalten, mein Kind, meiner Schwester, das sind alles Sachen, die äh, nicht gehen oder schwierig gehen. Dann geht es schon los, wenn man einkaufen geht und äh, an der Theke was verlangen will, finde ich. Zum Beispiel bei Bäcker auch. Äh, oder wenn man unterwegs ist und äh, Fragen stellen möchte, was äh, dann nach dem Weg oder das geht alles nicht. Um, Andreas hat ja um, how bad she's uh, describing her own experience of the disease and um, ask her to count from zero to 10 and uh, how she feels about, she's saying for her it's a 10 uh, versus what she could um, think of because she can't do any communication, communication with others, because she's going for shopping, um, family, um, she's not able to work at the moment. Manchmal und sehen ist das ein Problem? Sehen ist jetzt wieder schwieriger. Nach dem Spritzen war es besser. Würden Sie sagen, dass ich besser sehen kann, als dass ich sprechen kann? Ich lasse jetzt nicht sehen, keine Sorge. Aber würden Sie sagen, dass Sehen einfacher geht als Sprechen? Nur natürlich einfacher. The question was, are there any maneuvers that help her um, to relieve the tremor? Any um, on the neck or uh, any other maneuvers? And she, she said that 
laughing or yawning uh, helps her a bit to that sometimes helps her a day. The second uh, question was, uh, is singing helping? And she said that after the injection, uh, she could sing a bit better now, it's worse again, but it doesn't help. Können Sie flüstern? Können Sie, wenn Sie sich mit Ihrem Mann unterhalten, flüstern, sich flüssig unterhalten? Ja, flüstern ist einfach, ähm, da merke ich halt auch manchmal dann auch so ein Ausgezogen. Und was ich bemerke, wenn ich nicht ausatme und rede, geht es und dann eine, dann kommt manchmal die Töne einfach. Das ist aber schwierig, nicht mehr einfach äh, Ablauf des Lebens. Reden tut man ja beim Ausatmen. The question was, is, uh, mm, is whispering, uh, whispering. Uh, whispering. whispering makes it better, she's saying, but during whispering is not always better sometimes, but she's saying sometimes she's whispering with breathing in than breathing out is better. <laughs> Was macht sie nun wirklich? Ich bin im Außendienst, und vom Außendienst bei den Finanzamt. Ich muss kommunizieren, muss reden, muss argumentieren. Ich rede auch mal einen ganzen Tag nicht, aber dann wieder ständig am Stück oder telefonieren sehr viel. Spielen Sie nicht so wenig? Question what she's doing for living. So she's an office clerk and needs to do a lot of uh, work on hiring um working with clients. So that's obviously the key for this week. Welche anderen Symptome from the Bewegung oder zu dem Nackenbereich in den Nerven? Der Nackenbereich ist ständig verspannt, aber ob das jetzt Partiell daher kommt, muss ich sagen, dass wo ich hatte auch vorher schon Probleme, bevor ich die Erkrankung hatte. Die Zukunft ist nicht aufgefallen, es ist auch eine Gilde zu einem Business, um das dann zu lösen. The question was, if there is any tremor anywhere else in the, in the body, which is uh, with a neurological examination that wasn't found anything. Thank you very much. <lacht>